Welcome back, everyone, to the Pax Britannica Mod Parts of Iron Forum and host, Mr. Mocha Lover, Bob, the Governor General Defects. Tensions between the United Commonwealth and the United Kingdom reached a boiling point as war broke out between the two nations. A surprising turn of events, the Governor General of the United Commonwealth, Prince Edward, made the decision to affect the Commonwealth. The news sent shockwaves throughout the both nations, with many questioning Prince Edward's motives and allegiance. The United Kingdom has been left reeling as they try to come to terms with the defection of one of their own. Regardless of the options, Prince Edward has remained firm in his decision to defect and join the United Commonwealth. He's begun working with Commonwealth officials to end the war effort against the United Kingdom. War makes strange bedfellows, but as you can see, we pretty much wrapped up right here. In terms of trying to, uh, let's get these guys back under us. So we should have oh, this calling state only. That kind of sucks. Um, but we're doing okay. Um, trying to get over here is going to be a little difficult. So it's, we went back. It's 1941. These guys are doing okay. The Divine Kingdom, Portugal, but I definitely let them a little fray right now, which is fine with us. We don't really care about these guys now. Quebec. Does not want to come to the war. There's a bunch of dirty traitors. Uh, which is not cool. Not cool. And these guys are taking forever to freaking repair. My god. My god. I don't understand why it's taking so long to repair 20 days worth for a stupid destroyer. So, uh, it's probably a bad idea. Detached moving to Virginia. Yeah. Get your butts out there. Come on. The Free Republic of Kelly, huh? Rod West seemingly nerds another century, huh? Yeah, abort the task. Get your butts out there. Find whatever it is around there and kill them all off. So, um, other than that, we're doing okay. There's not much else going on. Yeah, there's another carrier there too, so we have a spare one just in case. You guys should be pretty good to go, but we'll see, you know. We have localized training centers. But at this point, we're just pretty much going to be island hopping as best we can around here. I don't understand why they cannot go yet. We only have 50% naval supremacy, but require 50% naval supremacy. We have it, but don't apparently. Go for a configure. Well, that's a problem with Oi4. You can't invade whenever you need to, but. So that's pretty much what we're going to be doing for the next little while. We're going to be trying to naval invade and get through here. Uh, Denmark through here, through here, and hopefully invade the mainland itself. Well, everyone, I guess we're victorious. I'll be honest. Like, I just didn't just like naval invaded, as you can see here. Um, I naval invaded through to Greenland and took out this part of La Labrador. Oh, culture is considered foreign. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, yeah. Well, we're victorious, and that's all we had to do. Like, I literally have not gone anywhere else, and the French Empire has come back, so. We're, we're, we're victorious. <coughs> Excuse me. Today, the American people and the nation stands one united whole, free from the yoke of London and her fading empire. Millions across a co coalition of independent states rejoice as Britons agree to cease fire following months of brutal conflict that has taken the lives of many. While well, specifics of the peace deal being worked on both sides, we can safely say that the war, end of war is now upon us. Well, the future holds now for our young nations yet to be determined, but a trial by fire is finally over. So, uh, we're still at war with these guys. We lost a lot against them, but it, it, it wasn't really very much. Um, the Penal Civil War came to decide some end of the day as the British Republic's Bain's appetite for the war across the Atlantic Ocean forced British delegates in Philadelphia to the negotiating table with the Coalition of Independent States. The original stipulations put forward by America during the Declaration of Independence were agreed upon by London, as well as some other additional territorial demands. Notably, the transfer of Bermuda to American occupation. Military parades across America and the CIS have taken place, but the same cannot be said for the now crumbling Anglo Empire. Anglo hegemony continues, but with a new face and flag. The CIS, Coalition of Independent Systems? Wait, is this Star Wars? Uh, Independent States. Oh my god! <gasps> Star Wars. But uh, yeah, so now we have a couple more focuses, um, which are over here. America's Longest Day. After a major conflict between the UK, <clears throat> the United Commonwealth, and British Empire, the government becomes a massive rebuilding effort. The war has left many areas of it devastated and needed reconstruction. Honestly, not really, no. We're actually really good. All previous natural spirits will be removed. Well, I, I guess. We're still by John Curtin. Uh, deal with the Loyalists. The aftermath of the war between the United Commonwealth and the British Empire led to a significant number of British Loyalists fleeing the country. Many of those individuals were staunch supporters of the British Empire and opposed the policies of the United Commonwealth agreement, government. By the end of the war, they feared persecution and retribution from the new government. As they probably should. But, uh, yeah, overall, we're still at war with some of these guys, so... I wish there was a way we could peace out now. Because I don't want to deal with these guys anymore. 
I'm trying to get to France is going to be impossible, so... Yeah. So now, Provisional American Revolutionary Congress. So we just screwed over John Curran. Um, okay. The Reconstruction Plan. <coughs> the Gamma established commission oversee the reconstruction of Af efforts and allocated a significant portion of the national budget towards funding the program. The commission prioritized the restoration of essential services such as electricity and water in urban and rural areas. The program also provides financial support and resources to businesses and grow industries as ever during the war, encouraging economic growth and employment. Why not? You know, just why not? Cool. All right, deal with them loyalists. Advanced engines are nice. So now we can either choose the, in the footsteps of giants, and we become a republic, versus the American Kingdom. Honestly, we want the liberal route, so we're probably going to continue with the liberal route with this one. Uh, we can do that, but we're going to go with the footsteps of giants. In the aftermath of a devastating war with the British Empire, citizens of the United Commonwealth are left reeling and seeking a path forward. At a moment of historic significance, the United Commonwealth holds a national referendum to decide whether to maintain its status as a constitutional monarchy or to become a republic. The results of the referendum are announced amidst great anticipation. The clear majority of the population voting in favor of becoming a republic, so I guess we're going to become a republic. What is this? Southern agitation. Wait, what? We already did this earlier, though. Actually, we're fully modernized already. Oh, well, we don't care. Anymore about that. Uh, we'll probably do constitutional reform because we can use that. We can add to universal suffrage, total gender equality. Oh boy. Prevented to policing, subsidized higher education, augmented augmentation and courage, and significant autonomy. Culture conversion rate, etc. rate. The Constitutional Reform Commission has released several drafts of proposals for the public comment and is still reviewing feedback and making revisions. The government hopes to present a final draft of the revised Constitution to Parliament for approval within the next year. The reforms are seen as a critical step in strengthening democratic institutions, promoting good governance, and ensuring that the United Commonwealth remains a beacon of democracy and freedom in the world. You know, I guess. If we have to be, I guess, you know. Oh, we also have Governor General Prince Edward for the first presidential referendum. Uh, the United Commonwealth is holding an election after a long and brutal war of the British Empire, which ultimately resulted in a referendum to become a republic. Elections being highly contested by a number of political parties, each with their own vision for the country's future. The Commonwealth has been left deeply divided by the recent conflict, and many are looking to the election as an opportunity to heal old wounds and chart a new course forward. Voters are being asked to consider a range of issues from the country's economic recovery to their relations with other nations. It remains to be seen who will emerge victorious and what the future holds for this young and still evolving republic. Well, it feels like it. I, I don't know why we can't get the other. Bob Semple, like a tank? We're going to go with Manuel Rosen, man, just because um, we did the liberal path before, and it feels like we should probably let them do that, so. Probably go down that route. Nope, we got Who is that? Big chin guy. Oh. Oops. Oh, this guy, Samuel Rosen. Well, okay. Um, what is this? A new American, a familiar world. Every, every army leader gets American Revolutionary Hero. Wow. General Max Army Sets, plus 14. Leader experience gain. Sam Rosenman gets first American civilian surrender limit. More division organization attack and defense of core territory. The United Commonwealth declared several generals from the war with the British Empire's heroes of the Second American Revolution. The decision comes after months of debate and discussion among politicians and military officials. The generals who led the Commonwealth to victory in the war are now being honored for their bravery, leadership, and service to the country, which is, you know, pretty good, but flag debate. The current flag, which features the Union Jack, has become a source of controversy among those who believe it represents the country's colonial past. A referendum will allow citizens to vote on a new design that better reflects the United Commonwealth's identity of the sovereign nation. Various designs have been considered, and the government is encouraging public input and feedback before the final decision is made. The referendum is decided to take place any second now. Or in the coming weeks. I don't like any of these designs. What the heck? The United American Republic. Uh. A tree? I guess we'll go with option. Oh my god, what the heck? Ah, but we do have some armor here to keep us nice and protected, even though it doesn't really matter at this point too much more. 
Yeah, okay, well, universal suffrage, I guess. So how do you get more accepted cultures? Is it through events, or...? I'm not really entirely sure how any of this works, really. But we're here to learn! You know, with all that stuff, research is going along. We're still putting more roads and factories and whatnot, but okay. The Better America, leader of the free world with Samuel Rosenman. You get a Better America monthly population research speed. Factories. Bulwark against imperialism. Honor our forefathers. Ooh, what is this one? In the aftermath of the devastating war with the British Empire, the government of the United Commonwealth began to, cons to consider a relocation of the capital city from Philadelphia to a more secure location. After much debate, it was decided that a new capital would be built in Maryland, and further inland it would be better protected from potential future attacks. Baltimore was renamed to Washington, whose capital of Maryland. Maryland category of the state changes to a dense urban region type. Add 35 victory points to Baltimore. Cool. Super heavy because you have to. And yes, we have to. Uh oh. <coughs> Expand our networks. Oh, there you go. The government is expanding its intelligence agencies in order to improve its ability to gather information and protect national security. It involves increasing funding for existing agencies and potentially creating new ones. The expansion aims to address emerging threats and keep pace. Keep pace with rapidly evolving technologies that can be used for intelligence gathering. I guess technically, since we're, oh, technically it will be art war, but oh well, you should probably do that instead. Oh yeah, we're at war. Yeah, I'll take some artillery. Yeah, why not? Um, so we're over American idealism, laissez-faire, parliamentary republic. Oh, we're still in total mobilization. Holy crap! How much do we get a month? Forty. Over 4,000, so the weekly stuff eh, is mostly effective already, but whatever. Yeah, I'll get some. I'm not even sure how to use these things, but yeah, why not? The better America. As the world continues to evolve and change, new challenges emerge. The United Republic is determined to maintain its leadership role and shape the course of the new world. Through strategic partnerships, innovative policies, and a commitment to its core values, the country aims to create a more secure, prosperous, and uh, democratic future for all. Factory, which is nice. That's interesting. The Free Republic of Kelly. That sounds uh, sounds like a fun nation to play as. They they expand all over the freaking place here. And there's the Republic of Santa Fe. The Confederacy of Free Tribes. Which one are you on? The better America. United American Republic. Well, undying patriotism, that's America. The government's been working closely with the military to improve training and resources for soldiers, as well as offering benefits and incentives for those who serve. Public events, such as parades and memorial services, are regularly held to honor veterans and commemorate significant military events. The media also plays a role in promoting military patriotism, with movies, te television shows, and news coverage highlighting the bravery and sacrifice of soldiers. Undying patriotism ability, improved version of the force attack ability. That's right, die for America. You won't die for us. What is it? Oh, what else to say? Federalist resistance will be severely crippled and unable to continue meaningful. Oh, power pack. That's pretty good, probably. Probably? I don't know. I'm here for the show. You will die for America. Alex Jones? We got Alex Jones, everybody. We're good. We are in safe hands now. Bulwark against imperialism. The United Republic hopes to position itself as a leader in the global fight against imperialism and to establish itself as a champion of freedom, democracy, and self determination on the world stage. It involves this image. The government is also providing aid and support to nations struggling against colonialism and imperialism, both in terms of economic assistance and military support. The government is also working to forge alliances with other nations that share its commitment to anti imperialism. With the aim of creating a united front against imperialist powers. Every coastal province of the country gained a series of naval forts. That's a lot of naval forts. Slightly more war support. We still have no stability. Synthetic mineral fabricator, as well as synthetic refiners, get more rubber and probably metal stuff. And get some arms back. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. Hard suits? I only have a couple of tea here too, but it's very hot. America. Nice. 
Throughout their active involvement in global affairs, the United Commonwealth hopes to establish itself as a leading power in the world, both economically and politically. They believe that their strong commitment to democracy and freedom will earn them the respect and admiration of other nations, and help them achieve their goals in the peace and prosperity for all. We're getting out of here. The giant awakes. Oh, the Mon Monagoa Peace Agreement. The United Colonels has become occupying Nicaragua for many months, and the conflict has been dead for both sides. After many negotiations, the Commonwealth has decided to put up a peace conference to end the occupation. The negotiations have been intense, with both sides making significant compromises. After several days of talks, the final agreement has been reached. The United Commonwealth agrees to hand over control of the government to the Zeladonis rebels who will establish a democratic government. The Commonwealth troops will withdraw from Nicaragua within the next six months, and the rebels will be responsible for establishing a new government. The Commonwealth will provide economic assistance to help rebuild the country after years of conflict, as well as helping to integrate the Nicaragua into the greater imperial economic system. D.C. Stevenson, the Commonwealth's former member of the occupation, has been quietly removed and liquidated by MJ-11 operatives, alongside any remaining members of the former occupation. Liberalism at the end of a bayonet. Oh. The giant awakes. America's glory and dominion and liberty. Uh, is in her dominion and liberty. Her march is the march of the mind. She's a spear and shield by the motto upon her shield is freedom, independence, peace. It's been her de declaration. It's been as far as her necessary in accordance with the rest of mankind would permit her practice. She must go abroad and search for monsters to destroy in the defense of liberty. Well, look at the Nicaragua. They're a republic, just like us. Happy liberals. A sham democracy, of course. And fed us defeated. Nice. You love us. You will love us. I guess we're. Are we lacking how much artillery? Oh, we're not making any. Okay. That's good to know. No one rocking so many. Backs Americana, get a whole freaking research slot. Oh, we can't do that one. You lose 60% war support and more you get more stability? Well, let's do Beacon of Liberty. Despite the differences of Britain, the threat of European revanchists is far greater. Our new independent America has joined the international crusade against French and Russian expansionism, the last before it gave to being dominated by authoritarianism. Oh, we just joined their war. Oh, I'm not joining their war. Crush Nero imperialist tyranny. We must take a stance against the Nero imperialist regimes of Western Europe. France represents an existential threat to global democracy. Uh, we must join in a holy crusade of anger with this great and terrible enemy. We're more popular. We have more population. That's pretty good overall. Yeah, that ain't bad. I'm to get some war sport too, huh? Well, ban the extremists. Look at this. In order to promote free democratic values, the United Congress will ban extremist political parties like the Continental Congress Party. The government views such parties as a threat to the stability of the nation and a danger to the democratic process. The ban has been put in effect in order to protect the safety and rights of all citizens, regardless of their political affiliations. Well, that's not fun. I want to ban them because of their political affiliations. Just kidding. Or am I? So now we need to dissolve the royal houses. Under the new policy, all former noble estates will be seized by the government and managed by a new agency responsible for the make upkeep and use. The agency will be tasked with developing plans to utilize the resources and lands in the most effective way possible to benefit the people of the country. The government has stated uh, that the national estates will not be sold off to private investors and will instead be used for public good. Us or them. Former aristocrats that called our nation home are to be expelled and their estates nationalized. The new American Republic must sever all our ties with Mother Britain for better or for worse. I'm about to wrap really right call. Oh, hello. Oh, they're just going through their territory. Oh, who cares? I like hard suits. Well, now we're going to remit the anti monarchist measures. The government is emphasizing the need for unity and inclusivity in the country, regardless of one's historical background and political affiliations. As a result of the decision, many British loyalists who were previously unable to participate in government and civil society are now able to do so without fear of discrimination or exclusion. Any of that affected London will be part and be allowed to return to the service of this great nation. Yeah, building slide. You get, oh, you get cores. But this one you get cores too. Any of the defective London will be considered enemies of the state and remain in service of Imperial Britain. Oh. Ensure private citizenship. Okay, I think I like that one a lot. The government's committed to upholding the fundamental rights of its citizens and is taking concrete steps to ensure that these rights are protected and enshrined in law. Which, I don't want this one. I prefer to dissolve the royal house and then do this, uh, 
Ensure private citizenship, but remit anti monarchist measures. Well, I guess we'll do that one. Why not? So, yeah, there's that one too. Yeah, I mean, we could, but. I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, we're at war with them and whatnot, but we could try it. I don't know how long well it'll go, but. And once again, we just had a civil war, and then we fought these guys, and then we won, and then now they want us back. You know. I don't know. I don't feel like fighting them anymore. Oh, look, they're banned. That's cool. And we're probably not going to win here, are we? Yeah, probably not. Which is fine. Whatever. Some light destroyer holes, not bad. There you go. Here, just do all that. Quadrupods, three, huh? Nice. We join them in the probably the last focus we do. What's that? Oh, Manchuria, huh? All right, well, whatever. Oh my God! Don't death stacks up here. things built, but oh well. We're out of resources. We really just do not have a lot of resources at all. So, But at this point, I guess it really doesn't matter too much. It doesn't. I think we're going to end it there, my friends. We did pretty much everything that we really wanted to. Some, some more of that. Uh, we have more focuses? Oh, this side is. Azusha's combat get prime motive forms, which yeah, I mean, if you want to read that, please go ahead. That, that's kind of generic for every single one we could do. Oh, we could do that one too. Eyes in the skies. An American orbit program would be cool, but oh well. And a candidate to neurological transfer, so. Uh, in the meantime, if you enjoyed the campaign, though, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And then, I guess I'll see you in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.